Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 11 of season three of Where's That Bar Card? I'm one of your hosts, Nick Dury. Alongside me, as always, is... Daryl Purvis. I am Monty Scott. He's barely Monty Scott today. Uh, this is another AM recording, uh, just, just so you're aware, but Monty rallied and it may not be all of him, but most of him is here. I mean, I mean. <laughs> he's emotional. He just got very emotional. And he's he should. This is, our, this, this is our one year anniversary show. Yeah, one year. Okay. It's hard to believe. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it incredible? Yeah, we made it a year. Yeah. Monty was Darryl. out celebrating last night. And yeah. uh, <laughs> this, this, look, this podcast means so much to Monty. It really does, actually. You know, this is a... this is the reason he gets up in the morning now. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> He's speechless. We've rendered him speechless. It's amazing. Uh, super excited for our guest this week. Our guest is Greg Foley, who's a CPGA uh, teaching uh, professional out of uh, the Canada region. Uh, very close to our guest uh, last week, Nick Starchuk. Uh, we we actually caught Greg at the start of the season in between lessons. He's he joined us from his car in between uh, teaching lessons, which was fantastic. And uh, yeah, super excited to have Greg on. I think this is going to actually be the first guest that I'm going to get to play golf with. We keep saying to all of our guests, "Hey, it would be great to play golf," and we've never done it. Uh, and Greg might be the first one. So that would well, be awesome. In, in defense of that, I mean, a lot of this was recorded through the winter. That's quite true, mm-hmm. actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very accurate. And but, uh, don't get this wrong, Nick. I will find these people and I will play <laughs> golf. <laughs> very threatening. Did you hear that, all former guests? <laughs> uh, Greg, I know where you are. <laughs> Greg, for people in the Ottawa region, uh, check out Greg's website. It's called uh, gregandjoegolf.com. Uh, it's Greg Foley and Joe Dubinsky. Uh, find uh, info about lessons and um yeah just super super cool guy and we were happy to have him on mm-hmm. yeah he's great <laughs> <laughs> he's great thousand dollars who doesn't love the thousand dollars we we we're not gonna lie we we meant to record this before we record the the actual we did. interview purge, but yeah but one of us might have had a few drinks last night and yeah uh, and Nick, you know, get your shit together. I'm sorry, I'll guys. Say. I'll I'll try harder next time. I don't know uh, what happened, really guys. Sorry. Listen, <laughs> I would like to know what happened because Monty and I are, did a show together last <laughs> night, and I left, and Monty was in complete control. He was in like, <laughs> complete control. I was, I honestly, I think I might have said, "Oh, you know what? Monty's in complete control." As I <laughs> left, <laughs> and then I knew something was wrong. The, when we got on the call to do the intro to record the intro and he wasn't here i'm like uh oh uh oh well and then, you can't leave guyanese people together <laughs> <laughs> and if if any of our listeners want audio uh, proof of this or even visual proof of this if you're watching this on youtube just wait for the greatest non sequitur of all time that still is somehow very funny that happens in this <laughs> episode all little hints it's uh, an area that exists between here and ottawa uh but just wait for it it's a fantastic non sequitur <laughs> <laughs> it led to a little confusion i will say there is a solid minute of i don't know what's happened did i i honestly thought did i zone out at some point yeah did i have a stroke or did monty i don't know uh but uh thanks everyone for listening golf season's opened uh i'm playing Uh, golf i also we should say uh uh, ever since gina became full-time on this podcast i think she's on less recordings (laughs) (laughs) it's very true but she's on her way to london england right now last yeah she was in las vegas now london england you know, yeah. it's it, look out of the four of us. It's nice to know one one of us is successful. That's it's true. Very nice. true, actually. Yeah. So, well, out of everybody we know, Gina would be gallivanting more than us. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I I was in a green room in England the other night, and they were talking about Pascal Perez, and I oh I, really? I wanted to jump in and tell my <laughs> Pascal Perez story, <laughs> but it's Pedro it's, Pascal. <laughs> get this they had never heard of off the creek <laughs> <laughs> off the creek sorry pedro <laughs> pascal perez 
podcast. Oh, that's the accuracy that our listeners look for on this podcast. That's the attention to detail that we deliver. <laughs> the worst as part hosts. is I'm, I'm not even trying to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they love in green rooms around England is just let's talk the Panama Canal. <laughs> you know, people around the Panama Canal. People you know, up Pascal the Pacquez, you know. People up the creek. Uh, <laughs> this is the longest intro of all time. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Enjoy our episode with Greg Foley. Hey, Monty. Hey, how, how are you, doing, brother? <laughs> Listen, awesome. I'll be honest with you guys. Um, the kids stole my shoes. The kids, I'm like, you know, I was out on the street. I was like, you know, the kids think they get away with everything. He said. <laughs> the kids have my shoes. Whose kids? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're not allowed. You're not legally allowed around kids. What are, what are you really talking about right now? Where yeah, were well, you last night? And yeah, kids? Well, they, they take my shoes away. That's what happened. That's why I get in trouble with the kids. They steal your shoes. They're yeah. up to monkey business, these kids. You know, we did a recording last week at 9 a.m. and Monty was just in fi- perfect shape for it. I was like, yeah. well, this is look, Monty's turned over a new leaf, but now yeah. 11 a.m. Monty's way different. Yeah, we missed now, the sweet spot. <laughs> if you get out of the Velcro and into the laces, the kids don't know how to untie them. <laughs> Good suggestion. Good <laughs> I like it. Okay. Yeah, right. Wonderful. Oh, I'm man, sorry to disrupt things, guys. I, I, I'm trying to slide into this thing, but I'm, I'm coming in. Um, coming in hot. Coming, hot. In, coming in hot. Yeah, yeah. Too many bitters last night. Oh, uh, too shit. many bitters. Yeah. Well, I, I hung out with Purvis, and that's what happens. I was in bed by 11. I don't know how I'm getting blamed even partially for this. <laughs> Well, I was celebrating you coming back. I was happy. I thought Prince Charles had you. So I was happy to have you back. You know what I mean? I'm mean, scared. The Brits they, scare me. Well, they, they can't contain me forever. <laughs> well, they contained uh, this... my family for years. We, we could barely get over here. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this might be the most golf golf podcast we've ever done because our guest greg is joining us in between lessons from his car which is just incredible greg it's a uh, uh, such a pleasure to have you on thank you man i appreciate he's, you he's already time. taught Thanks, monty a lesson that's the incredible <laughs> part <laughs> taught me a lesson about shoes greg Life knows what's going on. that's right man <laughs> Uh, oh, it's dear. great to meet you. You have uh, you have a history with Durys, but not this Dury. Uh, uh, you are a, a teaching professional uh, in in Canada, based out of Canada. Grew up and born and raised in Canada. That's correct. That is correct. Uh, I know the Dury boys. This is the first time that uh, you and I have actually met face to face. Couple yeah. emails and texts back and forth. But uh, yeah, uh, Ottawa born and raised. Um, just like you said, I'm in between lessons here. Got a enough time for a quick little podcast with the boys and then uh, try it. and fix some slices and That's playing fun. this afternoon at at eagle creek we got uh, opening creek. day uh club link course which is uh, in dunrobin um really beautiful course there's no no houses out there uh yeah, yeah it's awesome looking forward to it we got a group of lads so we got a little money game on the side going so it should be fun uh now being a pro like are you playing with other pros you're playing with amateurs um a mix to be honest with you um okay. probably more the group of guys that i'm going out with today are more amateurs than pros um but that doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot you know well, the guys yeah, well, that i'm how... playing with are are good 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 players, good players. They, can, they can yeah they can shoot under under par very very easily wow. so you know they they like to have a little side games and money games and stuff so um yeah it always makes it interesting so then do you like, do you take handicaps into account when it comes to money or, um, you know, most of the time when you're playing with these guys, there's not, uh, these games, there's not much handicaps being tossed around. And if there is, it's kind of like, you know, one or two strokes, uh, oh, okay. you know, nobody's coming in as a 15 or a 20 handicap to play, you know, in those sort of games that we have, they're all sure. around scratch. So, you know, try to mix the teams up if we have team events as close as possible and then. Let's see what happens from there. 
Love it. Will this be your first round of the season? Uh, no, uh, got a couple in so far. We, uh, we opened up, uh, was it maybe a week and a half ago? Uh, we played Maple View on the Wednesday, uh, which is in Perth. Golf course was in great shape. Um, surprise, there wasn't any water or anything on the course. And then the next day, Prescott opened. We played there. Mm. Um, greens were mint, as always. Um, you know, uh, Billy, the pro out there, he's a great lad and uh, does great stuff at the golf course. And then we actually had a little action out at uh, your cousin's place. He's oh, got, really? Uh, yeah, he's got a cottage just uh, near Smith Falls and home of Brooke Henderson. So in Smith Falls, there's two golf courses, uh, Lombard Glen and Smith Falls Golf Club. So 12 of us went out and played on Saturday. Uh, two of the lads had to take off. So then we played uh, another 18 holes, five versus five scramble and uh then head back to your uh, cousin's place for a couple of cornhole games and some darts and some some rowdiness um what's a cornhole game cornhole I mean, cornhole you know you, you don't know cornhole the, the bean, bean no. bags you might want to call it oh yeah yeah okay that way better than i thought it was <laughs> <laughs> thing of beauty <laughs> Yeah, uh, this is the, the crazy time of year for you, I got to imagine. Yeah, the, the start of the season is sort of when everybody's eager to get going. Uh, yeah. You know, usually when you get into the heat of the summer and, and the weather's 35 and 38, sometimes it gets a little uh, warm for people, uh, you know, and they've probably already shot a couple plus hundred rounds and sometimes, you know, are a little... Uh, Little done with golf so to speak. sure <laughs> uh where right now everybody's eager you know um the driving range is busy especially if it's nice out uh the place that i teach out at the 19th tee on carling avenue it's huge it's uh i think it's the largest uh, driving range in eastern ontario and mm. you know when it's a nice day out this place is like insane busy there's and yeah. golfers of all levels like you got hackers coming out and then you got guys that you watch them just stripe it one after another which is beautiful. What, uh, what is the biggest mistake amateurs make starting a season? Hmm. Biggest mistake amateurs make starting the season. Well, I mean, as a general, just as, as golfers and not even necessarily starting the season, most people, you know, when they come to the range, they're practicing just getting worse, you know, uh, <laughs> grooving the same bad swing over and over again. <laughs> It's probably the easiest way to say it, you know. <laughs> so, you know, it's always good to figure out what your issues are, you know, and try and work on something as opposed to just, you know, getting lucky and hoping that luck pays off over and over again. Um, most people, like beginners, they're going to have such bad grips that it makes the really difficult for them to control the golf club. And that doesn't mean they can't hit a good shot and good is relative. You know, you get a guy hitting a seven iron, 115 yards that goes, you know, eight miles in the air. He thinks it's a good shot, but in reality, that same club head speed should probably hit at 160 or 70 yards. Right. You know? So, you know, you can, it, golf's a funny game where you can do a whole bunch of stuff really, really wrong. And then somehow do a whole bunch of other shit really, really wrong to make up for it. And mm. the ball can go straight, but it's not really effective. So, you know, one thing I would say is if, if people could figure out how to hold the golf club oh, yeah. and, you know, that's going to make their jobs way easier. And if people can come to the range or go see their pro or whatever, and just give themselves a little bit of direction. So when they're practicing, they're actually doing something. Mm. That's probably good advice for most people regardless if they're just starting or, you know, getting into it. <laughs> Do you, uh, I thought he was going to say the biggest mistake that amateurs make is having a butterscotch shot right off the first tee. No, that's not a bad thing. Sometimes <laughs> that's my little grease for the swing. They say they, you know, <laughs> little swing juice. <laughs> uh, someone brand new comes to you, never played before. You just I want to talk about grip because we've never actually talked about grip and we don't usually get this technical on the pod, but do you have a preference of grip that you would teach someone on? Well, I mean, when you look at your basic grip, you got, you know, you got your overlap, you got yeah. your interlock and you got your baseball grip and there's some other variations like Jim Furyk and whatnot. But what I try and get people to do, and I don't necessarily teach a specific style, uh, 
is I try to get them to be as natural as possible. Mm. So, you know, when you look at a suitcase and that suitcase is sitting on the ground and you go to grab it, you end up putting the, the suitcase a lot more in your fingers. Right. And, and unfortunately what happens is cause your, your golf club sitting on an angle, right. And you go to grab it, your hand, you know, comes too much into the palm and not enough into the fingers. Mm. So, you know, the grip that I'm trying to teach people is just trying to get the club more in your fingers and your palm, number one. And number two, when you go to grab a pint, you know, double fisted, you don't grab the beer with your hands awkwardly twisted so that when you bend your elbows, you don't get the beer to your mouth, you know, <laughs> grabbing my coffee, I'm putting it in such a way that I can just bend my elbow. So in a good grip, you're trying to be, you know, in your fingers to create speed uh, and have control, which feels really loose to a lot of people. And then mm. having your hands in somewhat of a natural position so that you can figure out how to use your wrist to control the club face. Does that make sense? Yeah, completely. Mm. Yeah, but you haven't so, seen us grab pints after about the eighth or ninth one. Well, so. you know, I think that's, <laughs> that's just it, you know. Sometimes the grip gets a little better through the rounds, and sometimes it gets a little worse. Talk, talking to the people of the Thousand Islands. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> well, the people of the Thousand Islands reason, you know. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> Fill me in, Monty. Well, you're in Brockville and over by there. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. The Thousand Islands. Gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I'm sorry. I was a pronunciation. My pronunciation was uh, too loose of the grip. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Still <laughs> struggling, but it's funny. Uh, <laughs> it's coming through. It's coming through. Uh, you know, <laughs> sometimes you're too loose of the fingers. You gotta, you gotta palm it up a little bit, and you're like, well, there we are. <laughs> hey, hey! Don't trust your instincts, there, Monty. It leads you to no shoes. <laughs> Just because you think it feels good doesn't mean it's right. Good, 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 uh, good point as well. Uh, great. I, you, you hold the course record at Canada Lake, shot a 64. How old were you when you shot a 64? Oh, that was many moons ago, but probably around 20. Uh, yeah, around 47 20. now. Yeah, somewhere around 20, I think. Uh, so was that, you were in, were you in university then? Because I know you got a scholarship, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah just back, just back from university. And uh, I was playing with a buddy and just, uh, you know, one of those days where everything sort of uh, clicked together. Front nine was uh, the first hole. I remember I hit it to an inch and then Jesus. the next eight holes, I, I was hitting really well off the tee and the next eight holes, I had birdie putts and all of those birdie putts were looking like they were going to go in, but none of them went in. So it was like, burn the lip, burn the lip, burn the lip. And then uh, got on the back nine and those putts started going in and birdied 10, 11, 12, part 13, birdied 14, 15, 16. Um, if you ever played 16 at Canada, it's a, a skinny little green par three. It, it, you know, it makes Augusta par three look fat, so to speak. So birdie that cross the street and i see one of my buddies that uh, had a lawn care business and he's like hey fools how's it going i'm like yeah pretty good man and he's like you playing well today and i'm like at that point i was just kind of zoned out and i'm like uh yeah playing pretty good step up on the next tee oh my god 40 handicappers slice this thing into the bush <laughs> you know um it was unbelievable and then hit a, a, an unbelievable shot i remember it, it there's this little water uh meter uh, on the right hand side at 17 at Canada and my ball was right beside that and I had to hit this 70 yard slice over the bush around the corner and it ends up beside the green I chip up make the putt hard it uh, lipped out for birdie on 18 and anyway so yeah it was that was the course record day I mean there's there's I played with a bunch of guys that um, have been close and you know finishing it is not always the easiest thing to do you know yeah. I've had some guys that were five under through 12 and you know there's a couple more birdies out there but you know when you know the score that you got to shoot it's it's a tricky thing to do so anyways that was a it was an awesome day you know what i love about golf <clears throat> the fact that you're how many years ago was that and you're sitting here and then i had a conversation with that guy on the way here and then blah, 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 <laughs> in your mind yeah. how many thousands of rounds of golf have you played since then and you can literally go hole by hole you could probably picture every putt that just missed and how they missed. I, you know, it's it's crazy. Monty can't even remember how he got home last night. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. 
<laughs> I had a butter, uh, weirdly enough, but I, I, I don't know how I got home. <laughs> but it is oh, ridiculous. Dude. I always think about stuff that I did when I was like, you know, 14. I sure. can't even remember all these shots. It's just weird how the brain works. Yeah, yeah, it's true. You kind of remember those uh, those times. One of my buddies, Koski, he's uh, he's even better at it. It's unbelievable. He'll be like, do you remember this when we played? And I'm just like, yep, uh-huh, sure. And he's <laughs> rhyming off shots that I hit. I don't even remember it at that point. <laughs> uh, the good rounds, the good rounds the... stick around, you know? <laughs> that much is going to chime in something about the Thousand Islands there. but Oh, no, I was <laughs> going to talk about I the think Thousand Islands for a couple of minutes. I think he was going to talk about, he was moving on to Gananoque. Uh, Greg, <laughs> did you, uh, did you consider like a, a life in competitive golf? Um, honestly, no. Um, cool. You know, I've had some success. I had a scholarship down to the States. Uh, didn't turn out to everything that I wanted it to be as far as schooling and stuff goes. Um, so I ended up transferring up to Humber College. Uh, took a golf golf management program that they offer there and you know did the cpga route so uh you know teaching or working at a golf course and so on and so forth um, 2001 i was fortunate enough to win our uh, national championship for wow. the assistant professionals uh across canada anyhow um, that got me to be able to play in the u.s championship and the australian championship and it also got me a chance to play on uh, getting to a buy.com tour event, which is sort of one step under the PGA tour back in the day. Yeah. And anyways, my buddy Koski there that uh, I was telling you about, uh, he caddies for me. So we show up at, at uh, this golf course in Toronto and I'm driving this beater 1996 red Honda Civic with the muffler out. We pull up to the cop at the front gate. He's like, uh, hey, guys. I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, yeah, no, we're playing. <laughs> they show him my badge. My muffler's rattling all the way down this long laneway. Park the car. We get to the range. I'm nervous as shit. And he's like, cops. He's like, well, what do you want to do? I go, well, let's go hit a couple of shots. So he goes, what do you want? I'm like, give me a wedge. And I set up. And beside me is Hank Heaney. And... Casey Martin is the guy on my other side. So I don't wow. remember Casey Martin, but yeah. he was the one that got the uh, handicap. The cart, right? Yeah. 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 You betcha, yeah. right? So Hank Heaney is an animal, and this guy is bombing drives. They're hitting the shitter at the back of the range at like 320. <laughs> and I'm so nervous that it, it, I, I think I hit wedge for like 45 minutes. Bosky's <laughs> like, here, you want to hit a seven iron? I'm like, no, I'm good here. <laughs> <laughs> So completely out of place, man. Like my skill set is not in, you know, I was listening to your, to your podcast with Nick and he was explaining sort of his journey and, you know, my skill set was not to keep up with those guys. They, they mm. can just crush it. And it's only gotten worse from, from here. The guys are hitting at 380, you know, yeah. on these touring events, not even long drive guys. You know? um, so I, I kind of knew my place in there that uh, I wasn't a PGA tour bound guy, you know? Um, so teaching was definitely the avenue that i wanted to go and and that's sort of where i've ended up from here and that, in defense great. of your car though i've seen a couple of tiger woods's cars how they ended up so yours wasn't that bad <laughs> mine did not end up in a ditch <laughs> i also i was going to say we we have a lot in common we both caddied at events at eagle creek we both obviously played with uh with durries uh my current car is a 96 honda civic <laughs> Uh, <laughs> two door or four door two door oh. two door hatchback yeah okay all right listen i uh, uh, you, you guys like, i want to i'm a wait. member at a, at a club up here and i really want to win the club championship for the only reason of parking the 96 civic <laughs> in the the winner's parking spot for a full year <laughs> surrounded by all those fancy cars my prime spot i love it yeah <laughs> That's amazing. We'll, get, we'll get that thing polished for you if you get if you get the W. All right. All right. Send me the invoice. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta put a sticker on the hood though. <laughs> That's amazing. You show up with anything uh, uh, pre two thousands. You'd be like, I think the Sri Lankans are here. Is this VJ? <laughs> <laughs> the Sri Lankans are here. <laughs> Mind you, then you'd be like, well, it might not be the Sri Lankans, but now definitely the Sri Lankans are here. <laughs> <laughs> My, uh, Scarborough Monty shows up. Just yeah, showed up. 
I, yeah, eventually I had to show up. I, I was done with a thousand islands. I had enough. <laughs> He's moving west. <laughs> same, same like my dad. <laughs> uh, so now, like a typical year, uh, Greg. Like, how often are you getting out and actually playing? Is it many well, times a week, or is it, or is work sort of get in the way? I'll be honest. Usually, what happens with most golf professionals, especially from uh, like a club pro standpoint, is they get so overwhelmed at the club, and they're there mm. for minimum minimum 40 weeks or 40 hours a week but more re realistically those guys are there like 60 80 hours a week so yeah. the last thing that they want to do is play golf and the very last thing they want to do is play golf at their home club yeah where right. as soon as they step on the range you know mrs jones is complaining about t-shirts or tea times or so the nice part about being a teaching pro is you know i don't have to deal with that side of things uh, yeah you know, I'm a member out at Club Link, uh, so I, I play Thursday nights with the boys, men's night, and usually I play Sunday afternoons as well, too. And then uh, Brad and all the boys are members out at Stittsville Golf Club, and they have their men's night on, on Wednesdays. So once in a while, I'll pop out and play with them. So I usually get out like minimum two times a week throughout the summer. Nice. And how competitive then, are you like on a night like that? Like, are you very competitive are people gunning for you i gotta imagine do you feel well I, I, it's not it's not by any means that i'm the best player there right like so sure. there's lots of gunning going around from right, from everybody nobody likes to lose right so right <laughs> and it's even worse if you lose to your buddy that's chirping your ass off right so and in golf's a funny game because you know it doesn't take much to to to, to shoot a high score and make a bogey and a bogey and a bogey and a bogey, you know, and next thing you know, your buddy's having the game of his life and he's beating you. So, you know, uh, don't like to lose. It's uh, that's great. We had <laughs> probably obviously, way to put it. As you mentioned, we had Nick on last week. Uh, most memorable Brad story. Oh, I mean, countless, uh, countless Brad stories. I, I probably couldn't even get into all of them with you. Um, or any of them with you, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a, a safe way uh, to keep that. Um, but yeah, no, I, I mean, I play a lot of golf with Brad and the way Brad, uh, Nick described him on the tee box, you know, he's got a little bit of a strong bricklayer's grip. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> but when he catches a hold of it, he can definitely send her flying. That's for sure. But yeah. I'll keep the tame stories. Uh, to behind okay. closed doors for Brad. <laughs> That's great. I don't know I'll, if you know. I'll we, save that when I come down here. to Toronto. We're, we're a pretty loose <laughs> podcast. I don't know if you've noticed. Uh... <laughs> Just got to show up roughly on time. <laughs> <laughs> Relatively close. I mean, I'm close. Just, just it's somewhere. <laughs> uh, that's a perfect time for the par five. Monty, do you want to do the honors? Oh, that's going to be great. Listen. I don't know if we're making a chimney here. You seem to have a bricklayer's grip, but is this a par five? <laughs> Great. Uh, wow. Greg, question number one, uh, your favorite golf course. I going to have to uh, resort back to uh, Royal Port Rush. Uh, wow. when, we went to, yeah. when we went to Ireland last year, with like literally this, this week um, with Brad and Nick and, and Mike, Royal Port Rush was hands down the nicest of all the golf courses we played there the, we the caddy we had was phenomenal his name was neil uh he was lights out so that made the experience great uh the golf course itself you know the the golf over there is different than it is here as you kind of mentioned number one you know my first impression or thought of impression would be that okay we're going to go over there and play with a bunch of drunk guys and right. that's the farthest thing from the truth uh they like to drink and 100 percent they they're giving her but they play their golf and then they have their drinks yeah. where you know showing up uh, with my lads it's like you know we call it buggies and beers and, and then you got the <laughs> tunes jamming in the background so <laughs> you know a little bit a little bit different so going over there um the other part to it too was like royal county downs we played which was rated number one in the yeah. world um i actually like port rush better because there wasn't so many blind tee shots. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Port Rush, there was one blind tee shot. Other than that, the golf course is pretty much right out in front of you. Um, County Downs, there was a couple times where you'd be standing there on the tee box and you're like, okay, shit, the ocean's over there on my right. 
so I can't be going that way. Where the hell am I going? And the caddy's <laughs> like, oh, you, you see that little rock on the hill over there? Just hit it five yards right of that. Nick turns to him and he's like, can you get them to move the rock? <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, yeah, Port Rush was, uh, it was probably the nice golf course I ever played. And caddy was awesome. Um, I played, played really well that day. I, I putted like shit. Um, and you know, the caddy at the end of the round, he actually ended up sending me an email and wow. saying, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, it was the best, best grouping that I've had. It was the best ball striking that I've seen. He actually sent me a, uh, an email at Christmas time saying, listen, you know, you, you withstood the, the test of the year. You were the best, you know, striker that I saw all year in such wow. close proximity. And that, uh, that particular day, I, I hit it well. Um, you know, Nick is just a pure ball striker. The guy is unbelievable. Um, we stepped up on, I think it was the first par five. And, and I got a clip of it. I, I probably should have clipped it and sent it to you. But anyhow, the caddy's like, it's like, Nick's like, okay, well, how far to that bunker? It's like uh, 265. And Nick's like, no, 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 not that bunker. The other one. He's like, well, like 290 something. It's like, but, you know, nobody's ever asked me that. Well, he just smashes one. And Nick hits it out there probably like 360 or 370. Jesus. And anyways, we get up to the ball and you know, Brad's here. I kind of snipe one off the tee, you know, Nick's ball is miles up there. And there's a clip of the, the, the Irish caddies. Like that's the longest fucking shot I've ever seen. <laughs> 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 so it, it was a memorable day. Uh, awesome golf course. You know, the whole trip to Ireland was wonderful. So I would put that at the top of, of my list. The other ones that I would sort of consider to be up there, uh, I got to play, um cabot both courses that was, mm. it was pretty nice out there um and i also played Wingfoot, which was wow, uh, oh, wow. It, it, that was a pretty neat uh pretty neat spot the greens were unbelievably fast uh played with two golf pros from ottawa we went down and watched a hockey game and uh had uh, lunch with uh Steckle and it, it was pretty neat anyways uh yeah the greens were unbelievable one of the guys putted off of the green and into the bunker twice Jesus. Oh my God. <laughs> but but Port Rush, the it, the experience was that's number one, I think. It's gonna be tough to beat that one. <clears throat> we had a uh, an Irish comedian on in season one, and he described North Americans' approach to golf as every round is a bachelor party. <laughs> I could see, <laughs> yes, I could see that. <laughs> Tunes are jamming, yeah. right? Pints are going. Yeah. <laughs> the boys are out of control. <laughs> Uh, other than Augusta, I don't know if you've played any of Augusta, St. Andrews, or Pebble, but either, other than those, which is sort of on your bucket list courses you want to play that you haven't played? Uh, well, 50, 50th is coming up pretty soon. And, uh, you know, every year, usually Brad, Nick, and I and somebody else go on a trip somewhere. So yeah. I think for my 50th, I, I, we're, I think we're going to do Pebble and nice. try and go down to the Titleist factory and, and do the whole experience down there um so you know i know that's on the list there that you you had but that's probably the one that i'm going to hit next to be honest yeah, yeah. Um, that's great and then you know the good thing about nick is he is he just he's a golf freak so he loves his shit and he is just he'll find these golf courses like you guys were talking in the podcast in the middle of nowhere so yeah, uh, yeah. we've done a few trips with him and you know i think uh, northern michigan is on the list at some point in time um yeah. you know so uh, I just kind of go, okay, Nick, where are we going? <laughs> and he comes up with it, and Brad and I are like, all right, man, let's do it. I uh, I got included on a, on a on a text thread to for you guys coming down to Toronto in about a month's time, and I was uh, quite uh, over the moon to be included on that. I can't wait to play with you guys. Uh, it's it, going to be fun. It should be a hoot. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I think we got uh, at least one golf course lined up already, and then uh, trying to get a hold of a second one. So uh, Brad we should have cannot- a hoot. Brad cannot stand that his younger cousin is better than him. He fucking well, hates it so much. I can't wait. I can't wait. And, and you know, don't fall for his shit. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I fell for it once. Put, it's never happening again. Uh, put he, your earphones uh, in. Robbie and I played against him and our other cousin, Joe, uh, in a team event last year. And on the sec, I, I, I think I birdied one and he got him pissed off. And on the second tee, he gave me a shot of Sambuca. 
both of us and both of us hit it about 30 yards off the tee and brad was like just over the moon just yeah i got them now i fucked them up and we i i demolished them over the next eight <laughs> holes it was fantastic <laughs> oh boy yeah awesome uh question number two you can put together your ideal foursome uh with the caveat no pga lpga or live players and anyone alive or dead who is rounding out your foursome uh, so you're saying I can pick anyone, uh, anyone, anybody I want. Well, I mean, you know, my dad got me into the game. Uh, my mom, those two kind of no brainers. Uh, and uh, Freddie couples probably would be there. Uh, well, no PGA, be... no PGA players oh, no. or former. Nope. Pros. Oh, okay. basically. Okay. No pros. Um, who would the fourth one be? <laughs> that one. I, I don't know. I think I'd have to think about that one for, uh, an open tee off time, Nick. What do you got? You, you free? <laughs> you want to play with mom and dad? <laughs> Actually, one, one of the guys that I play golf with all the time, uh, Jason Winters, uh, when I worked uh, at the other driving range in Canada, um, him and I were there. And this guy is an absolute gem. Um, mm. I'd, I'd probably throw him into my foursome. Nice. Just, uh, you know, he's a beauty. So mom, dad, Jason Winters. That, I think that would be a, a good foursome. Love it. This is the first time we've had Jason Winters included in the force. <laughs> well, we can get him in. He's he's often been snubbed, but he, he yeah. finally made it. He's in. Monty, I'll, uh, put, I'll put us together something in the in the GAN there one day, a little threesome. All right. Oh, I can't. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. I was just Are happy to be involved in the uh, group email. Uh, I can't wait to play with you guys as well. All right. All right. I love it. <laughs> I've never heard it referred to as the GAN before. The I GAN, love I love that. That's great. <laughs> uh, a hot summer day, Greg. Uh, bar cart comes around. What are you ordering from the bar cart? Uh, I don't drink a ton on the golf course, but if I've if I've got an open bar, it's probably going to be a vodka cranberry. To be honest. Wow. Very Keeps nice. it uh, lighting light and refreshing. Good for a couple, but. Uh, you know, you hit that five or six mark and you go from hero to zero and the coordination <laughs> skills sort of dip yeah. off a little bit, but you know, usually one, two or three, you're doing all right. But so, yeah, no, I, I would go with a vodka cranberry on the, the bar card. If so I how do to. you manage, how do you manage when like you're playing with heavy drinkers and they're trying to get you messed up? You just uh, able yeah. to pace yourself. Yeah. Toss them back. <laughs> yeah. That's over the shoulder. <laughs> you know. <laughs> It's not here. <laughs> the, the weird you thing is, when you said vodka cranberry, I was like, yeah, he, he looks like a vodka cranberry guy. I don't know why, you, but you do. That's it, man. That's uh, nothing heavy. I stay away from the white claws, so. <laughs> <laughs> though. Monty was drinking a white claw esque uh, drink when I left him last oh, night. Oh, I was. A Coco well, I'm trying to. I'm trying to uh, what was it called? Um, Chico Coco? I don't even know what's it called. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the red one. You know? I was drinking some of the red ones. I had a blue. Uh, Greg, uh, either you can answer the angriest you've ever seen someone on the golf course, or how do you keep from losing it on the golf course? Um, I mean, I've seen some stuff on the golf course from people. Uh, when I was a kid, I, I, my dad used to call me mumble Greg and, you know, <laughs> I would hit a bad shot and then walk down the side of the fairway cursing and then say my name. And, you know, that was probably <laughs> never good. And I never realized how much of an idiot I looked at looked like until I played with somebody that did that. And then I kind of stopped doing that, but that's not so much angry. Um, I have seen guys, you know, smash their driver, to pieces on the mm. metal on a metal tee box uh one of our trips a few years back out to pei um, so we got you know two golf pros two non-golf pros and the one of the guys good athlete he's played you know some semi-pro hockey and he's got high expectations so we're on the second or third hole and he's got his 200 dollar pair of shades and they are just twisted up and bent into pieces he's losing his shit and anyways so we stand on the next tee box and and nick kind of gives him the old listen man you're not good enough to get upset you know and 
the the more upset you get it just rolls over into the next shot you know so that was pretty funny but i've seen guys lose their junk anywhere in the bunker i mean tossing their clubs in the lake uh pretty sure one of brad sand wedges ended up uh in the pond on number two at uh canadian i kind of <laughs> remember him tossing it in there and then like the grip end of the club came up so it was like floating and sticking out of the water <laughs> <laughs> like a like a tease just far enough away you couldn't get it but the like of things dangle in there oh god <laughs> uh so yeah anyway so uh, it's it's good sir for some good you know comedy relief you just you just watch some golfers lose their shit on a regular basis you know speaking of that mumbles i have to tell a story uh, i just got back from a month in london yesterday and the other night i was walking through the subway station and somewhere in london and uh, Arsenal had just lost four to one to Man City, and there's this guy walking through the subway, the, the tube, and all he just walks by. My wife and I, all we hear is this fucking team. I fucking swear, I can't take it anymore. This fucking team, fucking. And I just turn to my wife and go, hey, "It's like a Leafs fan. That's like a British Leafs fan right there." <laughs> but he was all alone. He was just walking through the subway station. So go, the team. I can't believe it. I can't cheer for them anymore. That's it. I'm done. I'm done. And he's like, he's not talking to anybody but himself. I wonder what the t I wonder what the tunnel in Toronto sounded like this morning. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> that's not funny. That Same thing. Sorry, <laughs> I'm with you, Greg. No, I'm with you. <laughs> actually, you know, it was very subdued. It was very subdued. Actually, I think. Everybody's just got, you know, Leafs fans, look, we're recording this, Leafs now up three to two against Tampa Bay. Leafs fans, as soon as they go up three, one, we go, hey, that's it. That's yeah. We're in trouble. We're in uh -oh. trouble. Uh -oh. <laughs> they got them. They got us right where they want them. You know? Well, you know, in fairness, when you're dead already, what's there to worry about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how we, that's Leafs fans yeah. for the most part. We're either too optimistic or too well, down. That's what we are. Start from dead. And then you're like, mm, you know, <laughs> hey, let's hope for the best. That's what they say in the game. <laughs> in the game. Greg, are you a, are you a gearhead? Like, are you like updating your clubs uh, every year? Well, uh, fortunate enough to be a title of staff player for 20 some odd years now. Wow. Um, so they give me, they give me gear every year. And one of the nice things about Titleist is they'll release irons one year and then let's say woods the next year. So it's not like every single year um, so that, you know, I get new clubs and balls and gloves and hats and shoes and stuff and bags from them. Um, but I'm not like the super, like, you know, some guys get in there and they're weighing everything and, you know, I kind of grab it and give it a little wiggle and I'm like, yeah, I kind of like the feel of that, you know? So I'm not like Uber gearhead um, a little bit more towards like the technical teaching side of things. Sure. Um, yeah. But as far as equipment goes, uh, I'm not high on the the geek squad as far as that side goes. Let me let me get a, a little bit of a free lesson from you. Uh, I'm a six handicap, and my irons are 24 years old. I've only ever had two sets of irons. Is that dumb? Should I be upgrading well, my irons? I, I mean, you know, a, a lot of the times, the guy who's swinging the club is the biggest problem. You mm. know. Uh, drivers and depending on kind of what irons you have you know if you look at like a blade iron from 20 years ago and you compare it to a blade iron from today there's no difference right you know but yeah. if you start getting into you know the game improvement and the way they've been able to move the center of gravity around and the way they can mess around with the lofts but still hit the ball high and not have as much spin and stuff you know the, the technology has come a long way in that sense um for for the game improvement side of things and for yeah. your average guy trying to get better um uh, so you know having fitted clubs is you know a, a spot where you can kind of check it off the list and say okay well that's not the issue mm, you know and, right. you know it, it can kind of rely on you but you know if you give a really good golfer any golf club they can sort of make it work, you know, but if you gave a tour player a ladies flex and said, okay, take a full rip at it. I mean, right. that golf ball wouldn't go the way that they would want it to go or yeah. expect it to go. But you know, two swings later, he could go, Hey, hit, hit 150 yard cut shot with that thing. And they would make the thing do what they'd want it to do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, That's you know, great. I think it's, it's important to have fitted clubs, but uh, you know, really, 
you're the one kind of controlling it as long as yeah. you're not like way out on left field it's mostly uh, to do with you than anything else speaking of your iron snake what if you did win the club championship after you pull out like we, when the car is not there i like to just leave your irons there in that spot <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> since they're of the same generation the car yeah, and the they irons. really actually are they they are the the 855s will be sitting you could, beside the 96 civic you could uh, almost the old pick silver scott just peaked with the, <laughs> the new irons yeah, the new car exactly. the <laughs> big lebowski <laughs> has won this <laughs> Oh dear, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's time time for an upgrade. Some wheels and some sticks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Comedy's not going very well for me. Uh, <laughs> last question: uh, Your favorite golf moment? So this is either something you experience or or something you saw on TV. But I gotta imagine it's something you experience. Uh, I mean, there's personal personal stuff that I've gone through. You know that stands out i mean course record or you know yeah. winning our, our the assistance championship the national championship that, that was pretty big big stuff um but honestly the stuff that i i kind of get a kick out of the most is watching people hit like a good golf shot cool yeah yeah right that's that's you know um and the nice part about my job most of the time when people are coming to see me they're paying for my advice and stuff so i'm not dealing with a lot of you know karen's so to speak sure um you know, and yeah, the, those are kind of the things that I wouldn't say as one specific moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, pers- personally, there's some stuff like that, but just uh, on a day to day basis, is you know, watching a hack be able to hit their first good golf shot and be like, okay, wow, that's sort of how it's supposed to look and feel. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, and if I can get that happening multiple times in a day, then that's why I enjoy doing what I do. Amazing. I am so looking forward to meeting you uh, in person and playing with you. It's going to be, it's going oh, to be fun, so man. We're going to have a hoot, but don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can't wait. Thank you so much. I can't believe you're in between lessons. We want to let you go because you got a lesson in 12 minutes. Uh, so go get ready for it. But thank you so much for your time, Greg. This was awesome. Boys, appreciate it. And uh, maybe we'll have a party in the GAN, you know, anytime. Yeah. <laughs> we'll to. link up. <laughs> 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 thanks buddy thanks hey, so much boys. man all right hey, good, you, Greg. Good, good luck with the shoes hey eh, bro <laughs> <laughs> looking still looking still looking there might be one in his hair <laughs> <laughs> Take I'll, care, keep, buddy. I'll keep my hat on see you boys <laughs> all right, man. Take care. so what an episode with greg foley holy cow that was great uh he was fantastic uh very funny uh super yeah nice of him to join us in between uh lessons uh teaching lessons um and i got some free golf advice which was nice yeah oh, it's awesome it's a lot of fun uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh monte i hope you have a good rest of your day are you like what are you are you going what? back to bed are you do you do you a little hair of the dog do what, do you, what kind of sort of drink of Full of bitters are we are we going to first and at what time i don't know i'm having bitters right now I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> it's like... oh. i've it's never a... seen monty so emotional it's just beautiful to watch <laughs> it's the year it's the one year anniversary of where's that bar cut it's just really gotten to his yeah. heart yeah <laughs> it's, it's my soul <laughs> uh thanks happening? everyone right now. i have no idea it's amazing though uh, Monty, you gonna be a good? You you okay? <laughs> I mean, why not? Yeah. Perfect. Have you somehow gotten drunker during the episode? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's it's eleven fifty nine in the a.m. on a Friday. Uh, but this is great, uh, Monty. Yeah, I, I gotta get back to the markets. <laughs> no. thanks everyone big uh, trades today monty today's leave the markets alone today yeah leave the day trading to the professionals maybe just take a beat uh day trading uh, to the professionals day drinking to yourself that's how's that <laughs> thanks everyone for listening uh we'll see you next week with another episode of where's that bar card thanks everybody all right <laughs> is what the late Henry Longhurst
used to call the tradesman's entrance. Now, you know, it doesn't count as the tradesman's entrance. It goes on the side.